Today, I am gonna take on the challenge of a pansy. And for that, I'm gonna start with this dark blue and purple, and I'm gonna mix that for the main part of the pansy um, petals. And then you can see the back petals are really just dark and light. So I'm gonna mix that with a little bit of this lavender. And then for that really intricate one, I'm gonna mix some of this black with some of this, oh sorry, some of this purple and black right here. And then also um, some of this yellow, and then I'm gonna mix it with some of the white to make that really lighter shade of yellow in the inside. Well, that's gonna be our big challenge, but hey, I was at Walmart this morning doing uh, emergency shopping, and I found this amazing pack of sparkly stuff that I can add to my clay for more beauty. So I'll probably throw a little bit of that in there as well. What I'm gonna do is first roll it out a little bit together and mix it with my roller. And then I'm gonna put it through my pasta machine and get it to one nice deep purple color. And then I'll be back okay. to show you. Now that it's kind of rolled out a little bit, the color's not even yet, but while I have it in a little bit smoother rolling out, I went ahead and added some of this blue uh, glitter dust and some of the purple glitter dust. So now I'm gonna continue mixing until it's a good dark one solid. I love how this is coming out and do you see the sparkles are starting to come through with that glitter dust? I'm really digging that. But I feel like it might still be a little too much blue so I'm gonna go with this little bit of a kind of a reddish purple. Uh, this is just uh, Primo's purple. And I'm gonna add that in and see if it can't just get a little more touch little of purple. More purple. With that, I decided to throw in a little bit of this glitter dust. Just a too. quick hint, to speed up the process of mixing the colors, what I did was ran it through. You can see the purples this side and then the other blue purples here. I cut it in half, I'm gonna flip it over this way. And then when I run it through, it'll help mix that purple up a little more okay. quickly. Moving on, we're going to go try to hit up that really deep purple. What I'm going to try with that is this purple of the uh, Primo, as well as the black Primo with the sparkles in it. I'm doing like um, a half ounce here, and maybe a little less than a half ounce, like two thirds of an ounce. Okay, or less than a half ounce. Mm, yeah, maybe three eighths of an ounce, something like that. All right, and then we're gonna see what that combo does, whether we need to adjust. Roll the yellow out. I don't think we're gonna need very much of that at all. I think we're gonna need more of the light yellow. So I've got the white here and a smaller piece of the yellow to add with that. Um, you can see we have more light yellow going on than we do uh, the dark yellow. I also, you know, got to glitter it up so there we go is with that and that is with the light yellow and honestly i'm gonna see whether it even shows up in this yellow there we are back i was highly unimpressed with the yellow glitter it didn't really show up so i threw in a little gold glitter um it's kind of hard to see with the light but i think it's better so i'm gonna throw in a little gold glitter on this one um i am happy with the glitter on these i'm also pretty happy with the colors that there came out that gives it a little bit more sheen just a little sparkle because Glitter sparkle adds up everything, improves everyone's life, right? Now, I figure there's basically three types we have to make. We have to make this one, and we have to make this one, and then we have to make this one. Each of them are a little bit different, so I'm going to make it into like three small petal canes, and then we'll combine them. So for the first one, we're going to do the easy one, this one in the back, and I figure we need about one-third of the dark purple, and then I took a half ounce of the lavender, and then we just maybe like one quarter of this light yellow. And then we're gonna make, um, I'm gonna do a Skinner blend and blend these up and then I'll be back to show you what's next. Okay, I'm back. And so I kind of laid out the Skinner blend like this. Now, I am not entirely sure if this is gonna actually do what I'm hoping it's gonna do, but I figured if it does, then people will want to know how to make it. So because I only want that yellow in the dead center portion of that petal, then I don't know. Let's give it a whirl and see what happens. All right, I'm seeing that my idea didn't work. Hey, you never know till you try. So I'm going to cut this purple off 
So I'm going to kind of put it over here. Whoops, see what I'm doing? Put it over here in the middle. It's got a little yellow on the other side, but I think that'll just make it a lighter look. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of yellow through it and see what that gives me. Again. Okay. If you can see, compared to this yellow here, it's kind of losing its yellow because too much lavender is getting in it. So, like I said, this was trial and error, but I think I'm going to try to incorporate a little white in here to bring back a little bit of this lighter yellow shade and lighten up this end because those ends are pretty light now. I like the dark on the ends and I like this. So now we're going to fold this over onto itself like that and we're going to run it through and we're going to make a long strip so that we can accordion fold it and uh, after I do that I'll be back with my longer strip I'm going to start with a one I'll probably push this down with my acrylic roller a little bit first then uh, I'll probably end up I usually like six is the lowest I want to go before it starts feeling like it wants to fall apart before I accordion up I did end up going down to a seven ultimately I feel like this might be a little more beige than yellow that I want but we'll see how it's going to work out we got it all blended out, we got it all smooshed down, made a nice accordion fold, and now I'm going to push it down so that we can do a little work on incorporate a little bit of uh, veins in this because they're very veiny, and although I can't make a ton of veins, I want to try to put some through here, but I'm going to try, actually I'm going to push this back together and I'm going to come from the other end because I don't want to go all the way to the Things top. about clay, you know, you really can hardly make a mistake because nearly everything you do is recoverable in some way or another. So I'm going to push it back together and I'm going to cut it from the other direction. Look at the leaves, you'll see they're pretty rounded. So before I put the veins in, I went ahead and squished the center together so the yellow is kind of all in one spot. And then I kind of rounded it off. And now I'm going to go through and cut some slices. Let me show you what I'm doing here. I decided the lavender, I was afraid that it really wasn't going to show up under the lighter purple that's inside of here. So I rolled out a piece of lavender and I got it to a two, I believe. Then I took some of the really dark purple over here and I rolled out a really thin sheet uh, all the way up to an eight. I'm going to fold it over and then I'm going to compress it and run it through again. And that way, when it comes through, you'll see a vine, like the veins will have purple and dark purple and light purple in. So what I'm hoping is that that gives it a little bit more depth. And then we can put some veins in through that hole triple um, through the pasta machine at a five. So I really like the way that comes out because the purple, the dark is super thin and then it highlights the light color. And I'm hoping that's just the effect we'll want. So we're gonna go and I'm gonna make some, I'll probably do as many as I can, but at least four um, slits in here so we can have at least four veins. And then I'll come back and show you. be able to see here, in order to follow the grain of the leaf, since it's all pretty close together up here, I'm trying to cut them down at angles this way so it, it once we push it out and uh, start reducing it it'll make it look like real veins and they won't look just like straight up and down slices um, I put the first one in I closed it back up now I just cut this one open and I'm about to put the next little if slice you look closely once again you'll see that they're going in a vertical like a, an, an angled cut so I did this one and we're going to stick this one in here. I'm going to go all the way across and then I'm going to squeeze just to it. show you before I cut, what you want to do is you want, here's the center. You want to come just as close as you can to be past it. And then if you can see, I'm angling my blade. Okay, I can already see my first mistake because that's far more yellow than I wanted in the center. Um, the veins, I think, are going to be okay once we reduce it down. Um, all I can do is continue with so this. Here's point. a perfect example of um, when you don't put your veins in equally. They kind of look a little wonky donkey. Um, we'll see once I put them in behind the other main focal points if we can recover this. 
more to I'm come. I'm going to continue on with this as if it's all good because in the end it's going to have to be all good. So next what I'm going to do is make, I decided that the smartest thing to do is probably make that gold, yellow gold, and then the light yellow the center of the flower instead of trying to incorporate it into the petal. And then I just have the dark purple to work with and not the light yellow, the gold on top of that. So with that, I'm probably going to put those two together. And then uh, after that, I'm going to wrap it in a tiny, tiny bit of the okay, dark. So the first <laughs> attempt at trying to combine the colors for the center was 100% bust. So that'll just go together in my little scrap pile. But I feel like while not perfect, that could be something I could use. Now it's going to have to be reduced to maybe a third of this size. So I'm going to reduce it on down and then we'll come back and look. But you want to keep this edge kind of rounded a little bit and this one stays kind of pointy. So that should be an interesting redu reduction. I'm not going to lie, I'm actually pretty happy with the outcome of the center. Now, let me just say that these little jagged lines at the bottom, which I tried to show, because if you look at there, it looks like jagged lines. Um, the reason, the way I did that was I took the blade on the, uh, not the cutting side, but the other edge, and I just did it several times. I kind of pushed down the purple into the yellow, and then I reshaped it back again, and then did that a couple times. So it's not a huge jagged amount, but I mean, it gives it a little bit of a texture. Okay, for the final petal, I've got the deep purple, I've got some yellow, and I've got the lavender and the dark purple for the outer edge. Um, I went ahead and did this teardrop instead of doing a Skinner blend because I'm hoping that I'm going to get more of the effect that I want. So I'm going to roll this a little bit flatter first, then I'm going to put it through the pasta machine and I'll be back to show you the results. Okay, you can see I got a pretty long line. I did it on a six. I'm going to start at this dark end here, which is going to be a center, and I'm going to accordion fold. Here we go. That's what it looks like flattened down. So I'm going to squeeze out the air a little bit more, push it down with my glass like this. Most people are using acrylic or a glass sheet. I don't have one yet. It's on order. In the meantime, this glass works perfectly. My mama used to say, necessity is the mother of invention. So there you have it, folks. We'll deep it a goodie. All right, next I'm gonna turn it into a bit of a leaf form, form mat by squeezing in this purple. I'm gonna squeeze this purple in here, which should help make that circular purple look. And then I'm gonna try to round out the petal and then I'll come back and show you. Okay, that's just about the shape I'm looking for for it. I like that, that's pretty good. Um, next I'm going to take and it looks like those leaves have a little bit of a light edge around them. So I'm going to wrap this all in a thin coat of lavender. And let me just show you real quick how much purple I used. I had a little bit of the dark purple left. So I just took a little tiny bit of that, added it with the white, put some sparkles in for good measure. And now I'm going to mix that color. Right, I'm back. It's covered with the lavender. Um, I ended up doing that on a five. Now I'm going to reduce it down, back down to this size so it kind of is in coordination with these other ones. And then I'm going to come back and we're going to put them together. This is where I'm going to go into totally uncharted territory. Um, these four are going to make up the bright colors in there. And then the two big ones, these two, are supposed to be those two back leaves. Now I'm going to put these four together first and then I think I'm going to try to like, I don't know, we'll see. I'm going to show, show you what I'm doing here. Oh, from a distance it doesn't really look too bad. What I did was I took like a quarter section out of this piece right here 
so that it kind of goes around this piece, which it looks like it's supposed to do. Then I'm gonna take, out of this piece, I'm gonna also take a quarter section and I'm gonna go slit it in here and then I'll come back and show you. So for that last piece, I literally took a little tiny thin slice. Can you see that? And another tiny thin slice. So I shaved off a little bit of this side, shaved off a little bit of that side, and there you have what I think looks kind of like a pansy. Um, what I'm going to do next is go ahead and fill this in with some translucent. Uh, and then I'm going to try to reduce it down without distorting the shapes. In order to put them in the petals, you're just going to make um, a little triangular translucent. And you can just shove it down in there. Uh, just enough to make some separation with the petals, but not enough to distort them and then keep filling it up all the way around. I'll show you guys a little bit closer up. I've got all of my translucent. I think I have a nice separation between each of my petals. Now I'm gonna go ahead and wrap the whole thing with a sheet of translucent after I put it through my pasta roll. I'm gonna finish rolling this out, but I thought I'd add, just for fun, a little purple uh, shag. Here's my translucent glitter. Ultimately, I may end up thinking it's too much purple. I'm not really sure at this point, but hey, you never know till you try. Now I'm just going to wrap this around and then uh, I'll come back and show you all what it looks like. Wrap. Okay guys, here we go. Here is my finished product. Actually, technically that's the way it's supposed to be, like that. Um, For my first time ever, I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty darn impressed with myself. Um, Came out way better than I thought it would. And, uh, I think it looks like a pansy so you might be asking yourself what the heck do you do with all these scraps now I keep them on my board while I'm working on a project until I'm completely finished because sometimes you never know whether you need a little tiny piece of this or that to finish things out but what I do at the end of um, each of my projects is that I go ahead and I chop it all up really well and then I make blocks of clay out of the leftovers so that depending on what I'm working on so they come out looking something like this and this is here just to show you I took one of those two of those actually leftover colors and I covered this little uh, jar you know nothing overly exciting but I mean I think it looks pretty good and it makes a nice for color nice color combination and sometimes when I'm filling in a piece I need a little piece of the color from that particular project so that works out great for that too All right, you guys thanks so much for joining me i really appreciate it my name's colleen and you guys have a great day